I guess I've always been an outdoorsy type of guy. So when people ask me why I chosen to through hike the United States, I didn't really know what to answer except that I like this kind of stuff. I like adventure and mountains and milkshakes. I know most of them expected me to say I was going to hike for six months because I'm recovering from depression, a heartbreak or something terrible that happened in my life. Many people you meet on the trail actually have a story like that. The truth is, I don't. I just want to live and being outside is where I feel most alive. My mom has always told me to be myself and I think the hardest thing has always been figuring out who that was. People in general, they all stick a finger in your face and tell you how you should think and what you should do. Somewhere along the line you change, you stop being you, you get lost and you end up not knowing who the hell you actually are. Maybe that's why I went on the trail. Maybe it was to find myself again. Wo gehen wir, Hans? Wir gehen nach Norden. Nach Kanada. Natürlich. We're at day five. Seven in the morning. And I'm already almost naked. It's so hot. The desert was hot. Uh, the water was scarce, but the biggest challenge was something completely unexpected. Uh, surprisingly, it was the wind. Sometimes we had so much wind that I couldn't even move forward. Like the wind was pushing me and, and I was just blocked. I, I just couldn't move. Other times when you were like on the mountain and it's really steep, I was really shitting my pants because I didn't want to fall off the mountain. And yeah, that, that was quite scary. thought that the most dangerous in the desert is the wind and not the rattlesnakes, not the heat, not the scarce water, but it actually is the wind. Fucking wind. Look at the campsite, it's so nice. My house. <laughs> and my house. This is the house of Morton. Nicht Morton! <laughs> of, of Heinz. Are you not afraid that it's collapsing? That's pretty cool. I want to sleep there too. Can I sleep with you, Heinz? Yeah, but near me, not above me. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I want to do that. Also, the wind made like, everything super cold. Basically, in the middle of the day, in the desert, big sunshine, big blue sky. You had so much wind that I had to put my down jacket in the desert in the middle of the day. I would have never thought that would happen actually on the trail. How are you doing, Simon? I don't feel that water with the ice. Because we're in the desert and there's not much water, and we didn't expect 
the eyes to come at night. It's like a gift from God. So we're here, we're building a small device so we can get the water from the faucet. So we attach the stone to the bar so it goes deep in it. Okay, now it's going down. Stone and now the ball, hopefully. Yes, it's going down. So now it's collecting water. We're waiting a little bit until it fills a little bit up. And then we're pulling it back up. And we have got two liters of water. So now we So now we're gonna taste it. It's a little brownish. Well it's stagnant water so it's not very clean but filtered it should be fine. Actually, it's not so bad. Life is very simple, Andre. You walk, you eat, you sleep, you repeat. You left everything behind. You have no responsibilities anymore whatsoever. You only have to take care of your own needs. Basically, you're the freest you, you ever were. Good morning. It's a very long trail. It's 4,300 kilometers long. It doesn't require you to be super fast, but it still requires a commitment from you. You still need to make that amount of miles per day or per week. And otherwise you won't ever make it to Canada. Dreckige Wasser geht jetzt durch den Filter in meine Flasche. Und das Wasser schmeckt sehr gut. Bitte, sehr froh! Was haben wir? Well, that was cold. It's a rata. Yes. Mm -hmm. Snaky day. That's two. Oh. Yep. Says, don't you come any closer. The other really scary thing in the desert were the rattlesnakes. Um, rattlesnakes are venomous and if they bite you and you don't seek medical care, you could potentially die. Uh, most of them, they warn you before approaching, so they make this very loud uh, hissing noise. So you, you, you know beforehand that there is a rattlesnake and you have to step carefully. So you look around, you try to spot it and you go around it. Basically, they're not very dangerous when you hear them. The problem is when you don't see them and that's where you risk uh, stepping on them. If you step on them, of course, they, they're going to defend themselves and they're going to bite you. 
Yeah, he's right. Half of the rattlesnakes that I've seen were not rattling at me. They made no noise at all. So they were just basking in the sun in the middle of the road and there's this camouflage type of skin. So if you're not paying attention, you won't see it. I would just go and just step right next to the rattlesnake. And I remember those times it, it starts rattling just when you put your foot down and you, you just hear the noise. So you jump meters away trying to escape the, the snake and while jumping you like also trying to spot where the snake is because you just heard the noise but you didn't actually see it. You'd pray that you're jumping in the right direction and not towards it because then you'd be screwed. Let's go on a walk, shall we? So for now, there's no train because it's a red light. I should hear it anyway. Up. So here with Green Beaver <laughs> making his uh, making history. history. He's making his dam, so we can enjoy <laughs> the pool all afternoon. And here we have Mountain Goat. So after a hot desert walk, where the sun is pretty pretty hot, you can see it here. It's really really shiny. We enjoy a little rest here in this little river that we found. Putain la vache, on pourra tourner un film d'horreur ici. Whoa! Oh, Jean, the Reggie, the villain of four, huh? Don't do like me, kids. Don't. Risk your life for a stupid video. Night hiking was something that I was quite scared of at the beginning, but over time I started doing it more and more. In the desert it was so hot during the day that if I could find a river in which to lay in all afternoon, I would do that and then I would have to cover the mines at night. And at the beginning I was quite scared of it because well, everything is dark, uh, you have mountain lions, you can't see very well. Night hiking is, is an experience that every hiker should do, I think because you have a complete different fauna. So all the sounds are completely different than from the day. At night you hear all the frogs and the crickets. That just makes the atmosphere completely different. When you're night hiking and you have a clear sky and you see the moon and the stars, first it's beautiful and you can also see all the outlines of the mountains around and the forest and that's magical. I think once you get comfortable with hiking at night, you really feel more connected to the trail somehow. Here's a bee nest and the water is right next to the bee nest. Now I'm closing everything so that no piece gets inside my clothes. And we're gonna get the water. I'm gonna fetch it. No, I'm afraid that the bee is gonna come from inside the shot and it's gonna sting my dick. Okay, bees, bees. I'm fine, success! Water for the bees. After one week in the bush, this is the first road we see. And we're gonna head back to town to do the resupply and find a place to sleep. How do you feel, Simon? I'm so happy, but I'm so... Okay, okay there's a ride, there's a ride, there's a ride. No, not lucky. She didn't want us. She didn't want us many hikers in her car. Our beer is waiting. Beer is waiting and there are, I heard there are twins. They are waiting. Oh yeah, and we're getting lucky. Yoo-hoo! Second car. And we have it. That's called trail magic, people. <laughs> and we're going Casa de Luna. Calle El Capitan. It's uh, what city is it in? Uh, it's 1.6 miles down that road. Oh, no worries. Yeah? Well, thank you very much. So we need to go left to Spunky Canyon Road. Okay, I know it's it. just before Green Valley Market. And then it's a second street on the, on the left. I, I love the, the life now. It's so unbelievable. I think I never go back and go. She goes a bit. Ça te fait pas rire ça Non. 
Hans, il y a une grosse bite, là, ça me fait rire. <rire> But uh, very hungry because I want a, a huge hamburger. I say only one word: beer. Every thing is in the right. Was sagst du zu den uh, 1000 Kilometer, die, die, die Leistung, die wir gerade geschafft haben? Habe ich noch nie gemacht in meinem Leben. Ich bin richtig stolz auf mich. Und auf euch natürlich auch. Ist ja klar. Ich bin in der Wilderness und äh, ich kann kein Bier trinken. Ich habe nur einen Milchpulver. Hab ich einen Milchpulver. We taking a rest on the some kind of cactus. So we start our little nest here. We're gonna eat. We're gonna sleep a little bit. And then we we'll go on. It's pretty damn hot. Look what I made. So onion bagel with Italian salami and camembert. Because here in the state, we have only crab cheese and cheddar, which is not really cheese. They even have a cheese they call Swiss cheese, which has no taste. So day 45, it's 8.30, and in about three miles, we're gonna hit Kennedy Meadows. And Kennedy Meadows is 700 miles from the Mexican border and it's where the desert ends and the Sierra Nevada begins. My dad's a good fisherman too. Yeah, that's my dad's a retired fisherman now. But like, yeah. Get him away from this. Up here, these fish are still dumb. How do you say five in German? Food trout. Uh, Very good. The Sierras are so beautiful. I was glad. I was glad to be in the Sierras. I was really excited. Like when I first saw them, I was like, my heart was racing. I was like, it's happening. It's happening. Um, and uh, it was really nice because I just was tired of being dirty and grimy and hot all the time. And it was nice not to have to um, deal with that. There was water everywhere. The views were so pretty. I mean, hands down, the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen in my life, for sure. Putain, il est juste à côté, 4 secondes. Ah, je... ah de la grêle maintenant, putain. Ah, la vache. Ouais, on trouve un arbre, on fait tout. Today we decided we're gonna do a little side trail. So we're going so close to Mount Whitney, which is uh, the tallest mountain in the continental US, that we're gonna go and climb it. Well, we're gonna go there at base camp now, and then we're gonna we're gonna sit there and tomorrow morning at 3 a.m. we're gonna wake up. Regardez cette petite joueuse qui enlève ses chaussures. Et il perd son chapeau pour le croisement rivière. Ça passe Petit courant là So now we're in the tent. We are all ready to do Mount Whitney tomorrow morning. The only question remaining tonight is who's gonna take the bear canister out? 
and who's gonna be out of the tent. So we decided we're gonna play it rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh. So we decided to do it in one shot. Yeah, Allez, let's go! It's gonna be a pain in the ass. It's freezing. Simon! C'est touche les putain. C'est magique. these things that kind of build up in your life that you want to do and then I realized oh shoot if I don't start doing those things like some days never gonna come unless I make it happen for myself and so I just started making moves and then here I am I'm trying to find you know beauty in what I'm going through right now because I know someday I'll look back on this and I'll miss it So good. Mashed potatoes with cheddar and chips. Amazing. <laughs> French cuisine at its best. <laughs> I for a bit of But uh, it looks good on the packaging. <laughs> now we're gonna try to get up there. We have to pass those mountains. It's a pass for forest to pass. So a lot of snow walking. And it is slippery. Oh, 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 right now Woo! Passé. La petite crevasse, là. Mount Winnie and Forester Pass are like two of my favorite days just because we did Mount Winnie for sunrise and that was epic and beautiful and then um, Forester Pass just leading up to it you really felt like okay I'm in this year is now there's snow the altitude I think really got to me um i just always felt out of breath but um i think i pushed myself a little bit too much in this year is if i went back to do the john muir trail i'd go slower
Oh, oh, oh. Ah, t'es bien bas, hein Oh Il touche, là Ouais, juste pour info, il y a de la neige, là. Tout ça, c'est de la neige, donc... Ouais. Elle est froide, l'eau, hein I named every mountain uh, like Mount Ashol, Mount Wanker, Mount whatever. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I arrive then uh, uh, by the other members of the group and I was swearing like hell. And often they, uh, they push me forward. But one part is the PCT, the way or the trail itself and the nature, but the other big a uh, part of the PCT adventure are the people. Um, I think uh, even if you have a, a bad day and you, and you have good people around you, you are in a good group, then they, they can push you. I think with, without that group, there would be a chance to quit. Mountain water, not supposed to be hot. So this is uh, my, my only map <laughs> for the, of the PCT. So, but I using for different things like to wash when I'm wet like that. Uh, I wash my tent with that. Legend says he also masturbates in it. No. <laughs> 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 I'm dressed like that because I discovered mosquitoes and fucking mosquitoes everywhere. I've never seen that many. And I thought everyone with a bug net on their head is looking funny. I think I'm gonna buy one. What is it? 5.30 miles in 9 days? And then everything above 25. We did 450 kilometers in nine days, which is crazy. My legs are numb. 
I'm just hoping I reach Lake Tahoe now in three days. Take a rest there. Well, we just climbed and this view is pretty awesome. I think I stink. It smells like camembert. You have put it in the fridge and then you forgot for two months. Arriving in Lake Tao was a big milestone for us. It meant the end of the High Sierra and getting to lower elevations. Also for our group it was very particular because that's where our group split. There were injuries for some, logistical problems for others. The outcome of this is that I started hiking on my own and I would walk the next thousand kilometers by myself. I saw that being on my own I would become one of these crazy guys talking to a volleyball like Tom Hanks in that movie. This was also an experiment for me. It was what would happen in my head day after day when walking 10, 12 hours alone without talking to anyone to know how I would uh, cope with loneliness. What would I be thinking if I, I would get bored, if, if I would sing the same thoughts all over and over again. I, I really didn't know and turns out I, I like loneliness very much. My legs, I don't even know if it's 10, I know. And it won't even go away. It's amazing what your mind is and how it creates its own bubble when you're on trail. There's so much you can think about and that you don't realize. Like, I was never bored on the trail. I was afraid of loneliness and I discovered that I actually liked it a lot. That was some of my favorite parts of the trail was when I was alone. And um, I think I'm just type of guy who if he gets stranded on a desert island alone I'd be just fine with it. Snow can also be fun. Let's go! Yoohoo! Oh, <laughs> Almost got the tree there. Been very lucky so far. No injuries or whatsoever and I'm Really dumb and stupid sometimes. Look at that. Don't want to be raped by a bear. Pretty massive. Probably hurts. And well, must not feel very good after. We arrived at a little creek where I stopped to get water because. Not much water here. We're again in rattlesnake territory and it's hot. This is the only source of water uh, 30 miles around and uh, I'm gonna take a little dip in it. I'm gonna jump in that. Very dirty feet. See how dirty it is? Yes. As a European, I didn't really grasp the size of uh, California until I walked through all of it. So it took me three months and a half to do the 2,700 kilometers from uh, the Mexican border to Oregon. It becomes quite difficult at the end of California. You have the feeling that they, you're never going to reach Canada. You're thinking, oh, I'm not going forward, I'm not moving, because you're still in California, you, you haven't crossed any border, so man, you're kind of mentally down. And once you reach into Oregon, so you cross your first border, and it's, it's really a big milestone. It's like you realize that it's gonna happen, you're gonna make it. I 
And also in Oregon I uh, met with Toolbox again, which I hadn't seen for over a month. So we are in Ashland, Oregon. Today is the time for preparing the food and the boxes for the next two months. So here we have Toolbox hey. and this is his food and his boxes. Up to the Canadian border. And that's my food and my boxes. So this is everything only for Oregon. So every box is gonna contain approximately four or five days worth of food and uh, that I'm gonna be able to pick up every week along the trail. So here is only dry food, just things that I can keep in boxes. So all the fresh products, hopefully I'll, I'll see if I can find a little store on the way or something. Our breakfast view for this morning. See this nice delectable chunk of just gorgeous meat. It's just so... Mm. What are you having? Same omelet as that. But sausage. Sausage. Big sausage. Big old sausage. Yeah. No big sausages for you? No. Such I like a... too much meat in the morning. You prefer it in the evening? <laughs> oh, you should have put... Are you blushing? Uh -huh. <laughs> I think it was who presented the sausage to him. So sticky. Oh. Doing laundry? Oh yeah. my god, those legs. <laughs> Come on, I want to see that. Come on, move your little ass. Ah! <laughs> so. No, we don't take pictures. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're laying there saying you're gonna do stuff and you're doing absolutely nothing. That's what you're paying the ass. You're damn right. Well, adjusting your ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite a shitty section. It's been four days, it's been like that. It's kind of boring compared to what I've been used to uh, in the Sierra and in Northern California, but uh, I have to go through it, it's part of the game. Yesterday I got my first headache in four months and I'm pretty sure it's because of the smoke. Uh, I'm usually not prone to headaches or stuff like that. That's why I have this thing to help me a little bit, don't know if that works, but I'd rather look like a Japanese tourist in Paris than have lung cancer. But one thing that is awesome about here is look at those trees. This, this is regrowth. And you can see they're everywhere. This is natural regrowth. This is not man-made, just normal course of the forest. The forest that burns is healthy because it renews the soil. It will use everything and then it grows again. One of the surprising things for me in Oregon was all the forest fires. I had never seen forest fires and I never walked through burnt forests. Back in France you, you don't have forest fires really, like it's very rare. In, in the US it's kind of crazy how many fires they have every year. And uh, when I crossed into Oregon we had five forest fires in California, just at the border. And there were five forest fires in Oregon as well. So when I was walking on the trail we got all the smoke from all those forest fires. We, we went the, in between the middle to get tired very easily so I couldn't make as many miles as I was used to. Uh, so it's kind of depressing. I had my first headaches on the trail. That was also because of the smoke. You didn't sleep as well. Also, in the morning you would wake up and you would see all these ashes on your tent. That was quite crazy. That was that was a big challenge of, in Oregon. Everything's been destroyed by the fire. I, I wasn't expecting this. I was not expecting such a destruction. Yeah. Who's having fun hiking in the smoke? Not me. <laughs> I've, I've never felt like I was going to puke. Ever. So the past days in the PC have been pretty shitty with all the smoke. But look where it led to. Day 120. Oregon. This is Crater Lake. 
you don't really realize what your body can do until you push it. And uh, once you start pushing it, you hate yourself during the process. But uh, once you get to where you want it to be, that's when you realize that this whole process were the only moments where you felt real. Everything you feel on trail is much stronger. In a day, you, you could go through pain, anger, frustration, and then you climb on top of that mountain and you feel content and you have those endorphins kicking in. So you, you're proud and you're happy and you feel joy and then you go back down again and the weather's changing and you feel like crap again and it's always changing you always feel different things and i think that's what life is about and, and people are looking for this and that's why they go on adventures it's, it's because everything you feel is so much more real Like when you arrive at camp late at night, you set up your tent and you walk 10 hours that day, so you're super hungry. Everything tastes so much better when you're thirsty or when you're hungry. And trail food is pretty disgusting usually. You start making your food and you start eating it. It's also like heaven in your mouth. You rediscover how to enjoy simple things again. You realize you don't need much actually to be happy. And, and I mean really happy. Pasta roni dish with uh, textured vegetable protein and some vegetable soup mix added in. So I get my protein, my starch, and my veggies. Ketchup. What are you eating? Whiskey. <laughs> That's a bald eagle? Yeah. Whoa. He's a really big one. Man, can you imagine getting shot on by Giant <laughs> Are you gonna laugh that once when I was a child? It was snowing and uh, I got pooped on by a pigeon, but I saw it was snow and I was trying to catch it <laughs> in my mouth and it was falling pretty fast and pfft, on my face. <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> Is it cold? Yes. Was it worth it? Yes. Might as well stay in the water now that you're wet. Yeah, I know all my butt. <laughs> what, can you feel it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel it. On my asshole. Just, <laughs> just at the end, you know what I mean? Nutella right from the ball by toolbox. Never ever a show, but here on the trail, it's normal. Smile. We tried 200 km and less than 24 hours, which is 63 miles. And basically, it's gonna bring me here. You see that mountain covered in snow? That's Mount Hood. And that's where my journey will stop. I am hoping to do it in 18, 19 hours. We had kilometer 43, which is around my 26. We have done a full marathon in a little more than seven hours. So, still feeling good. Hips are paining a little bit, but uh, I guess that's normal after four months of walking every day. Otherwise, all good for now. So I'm averaging a speed of six kilometers an hour so far. Uh, I've taken two little 10 minutes break to collect water and to eat. And uh, hopefully I can keep up that pace 
but uh, let's see the first half is always the easiest 100 kilometer challenge met kilometer 70 which is mile 43 44 it's not going well right now i'm in the no good zone my left feet hurt and i'm wondering why i did this shit why i couldn't hike normally easy enjoy a nice sunset a book on the tree take my time and now i have to go 100k to prove what yeah fuck. it's gonna get dark soon and i think the night's not gonna help i'm arriving at timberline lodge Very late at night, I don't know what time it is. My GPS on, I am dead tired. So, yesterday I did exactly 100 km in 18 hours 23 minutes. US Canada border, 507.2 miles. When I arrived in Washington, I hitched to town, rented a car, I went to Burning Man. When I came back 10 days later, I was hiking on my own again. At that time I was okay with that, because now I knew what to expect. That's also one of the reasons why uh, Washington was my favorite state. Washington blew my mind. The landscape were incredible and it was more challenging than the rest. It, Washington was like a big final test on the PCT. I still had 800 kilometers to do and it was physically more demanding, everything was steeper. Normally tonight, after five days, five nights in nature and I have no food anymore, normally tonight I'll be able to enjoy a nice double cheeseburger with fries and a milkshake, maybe two milkshakes, maybe even three milkshakes. And that is a bear, a little bigger than me. Just a creature. So this is the seventh black bear I see. But this one, the first one that is not going away so fast. I want to touch it. But that would be stupid. A lot of people are scared of bears. And you eat grass. You don't eat people. They're usually scared of humans. They can fight also, so I wouldn't go super near. But... I think this is a safe distance. It was mentally more challenging because it was raining all the time. It was already mid-September, summer was over, it was getting colder. I had my first stretch of six days of continuous rain. That was crazy because you're pitching your tent in the rain, you're waking up in the rain and you're trying to keep all your things dry, uh, trying to get your sleeping bag out without it being wet because if it gets wet then you're basically screwed because you won't survive the night uh, below freezing without sleeping bag. You have no room for mistakes, so it's mentally a lot more exhausting. So 
So my GoPro is dead because of the rain. My camera is not, surprisingly. Good camera. So, third day of continuous rain. It's insane. I'm soaked again. Everything is wet again. I never hiked in that much rain before. It's just raining continuously all day. Not excited about Washington anymore. I hate rain. I hate rain so much. I'm soaked. I'm quite high on the edges of the mountains, but I don't see anything. I'm in the cloud. It's supposed to be beautiful, but I can't see shit. It's been going on for seven days now. After this big stretch of rain, I was lucky to find a road. Uh, I hitched to town and I arrived to a mountaineer's hut where there were a bunch of hikers and there I could try my things and reassess the situation. And the situation was pretty bad because snow was forecasted for the next days and we were already late September, so I had to move fast if I wanted to reach Canada. So can you just step to the camera, what are you doing? Coyote, get out of here. Yeah. I'll listen to <laughs> you, come on. To on that one, though. She's poking my eyes. Really Tell me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving her a stick and poke. A prison tattoo. No. It is a prison it's tattoo. It's a hiker tattoo. Is this prison? No. <laughs> this is what happens when you comp when you go all the way to Canada. You came back and you get a stick and poke. <laughs> so does it hurt a, a little bit? I mean, yeah, it's Can a needle it? going in your skin, yeah, but yeah, it feels like it's just someone's like pinching you over and over again. That's yeah. what it feels to me. Just like really like someone just taking your skin going like this. Hey, Coyote, can you give me some hot chocolate, please? <laughs> I said please this time. <laughs> So the weather now, it's pretty shit. It's snowing. It's getting crazy now. It's snowing. And it's fucking wind. So, that stretch before Canada. And we've been snowed in all night. So, I'm all covered. So, we need to, to hurry up. We need to rush. The first real struggle was the snow. I can't open my tent. It's frozen. Ah, fuck. Shit. Fucking shit. Ah, fucking fuck. We've all been surprised. So did I, but I didn't lie. Not yet. Well, now I have to find out how to get out of my tent. Last result would be to cut it open, but I certainly don't want to do that. Everything is under the snow. This is my tent. So, completely covered. I don't think camping is an option tonight. Everything is wet, it's completely wet. Using my sleeping bag. So, I'll just have to push through and hike probably through the night. So we're less than a mile from the border. It was fucking crazy. Can't believe it. Just did this crossing the old country, just hiking.
I assume that Return from the Through Hike was a completely new take on who I am and some grand expansive view of the world in which we dwell. Ironically, what I learned was something that I already knew. Turns out that just like adventure and mountains and milkshakes, 